Good afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here doing today's presentation. As I said, my name is Simon Brown doing today's presentation. Really, we are looking at, at we're doing some, I'm calling it a, a sort of an absolute beginner series. And uh, with, with, with apologies to David Bowie, who did the song back in the 80s. Uh, we did one a week or so ago on how to select a, 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 a stockbroker. Today, really, we're saying, okay, how do we buy shares? There's numbers of different of ways that stockbroker, obviously, the one route, but what are the others and what, what is available? What are those various different options? Um, it, as I said, it, it, many ways to buy shares. Um, I think perhaps most important is that we're going to look at JSC shares only. We are going to be doing a webinar on buying international shares uh, into the US, Australia, um, Western Europe and the like. Unfortunately, Japan, not that easy, but certainly we will be doing a webinar on that. Today we're going to focus on the JC only. A couple of we need a strategy beforehand, and I, the aim of today's webinar is to run you through the different options that are available, and I think that will help inform a strategy. Um, but things to look at is, is timeline. Uh, some of the products we're looking at are going to be uh, very much more longer term, just by their nature of when you can buy and sell. So there's issues around that. How much you're investing? You know, if you've got a uh, thousand rand, or ten thousand, or a hundred thousand, or a million, there are going to be implications there. And then, of course, how much effort required? How much you know work do you want to put in? I, I'm figuring, since we're all here at a lunchtime on a Monday, uh, nice sunny day out in Joburg, certainly not so great in Cape Town, apparently. But you you probably want to put some effort in. But we'll delve into that as well. I want to touch on those kind of sort of bases as to what's really important and, and what we need to focus on so that you can make informed decisions. That's always the important point. And then if you decide to go the stockbroker route, as I said, we've done a webinar on, on selecting a stockbroker. That stands all on its own. A uh, quick point on questions. Uh, I'll take questions at the end. You can put them in the text box or raise hands. We're looking at probably about 15 minutes for the webinar. The first options are uh, collective investment schemes, better known as unit trusts and exchange traded funds. I'm going to delve into all of these in detail, but I think that certainly unit trusts are probably the best known option for folks out there uh, to get exposure to the JSC. You've got your traditional stockbroker, your full service. That's the person you would phone up. You would probably get advice. They would make suggestions and recommendations. Then you've got your DIY stockbroker. Typically these days, that's your online stockbroker. The big banks all offer uh, F&B, ABSA, Standard, um, Nedbank, and there's also PSG, there's Sunlum. There's a number in that space. They tend to be uh, cheaper. They tend to be, as I said, it's a do-it-yourself. It's very much that DIY. You've also got the asset manager. In many cases, they're going to be a full-service broker as well. Um, and what they will do is they will take your money and invest it on your behalf. And then there we would also throw uh, hedge funds who offer you spectacular returns, but sometimes go up in a absolute pile of smoke. And then AutoShare, uh, two products, one from FNB called ShareBuilder, one from Standard Bank called AutoShare Invest. They're brilliant products, and I'm going to come to them at the end of the webinar, and I'll delve into them in details. They really, really are top products and well worth having a look at. Um, I, I use them simply for shares that I want to buy on a regular basis, you know, those boring ones, my British American tobaccos, my sassels, just do a monthly purchase on those, but we'll delve in. So that's broadly what we're looking at, the collective investment, a stockbroker, uh, asset manager versus auto share, the four broad categories. I'm going to delve into each of them in a little more detail, starting with unit trusts. Right at the bottom there, you can see the URL for uh, Equinox.coza. They are a unit trust clearinghouse in essence. It's like a supermarket where you can go and find out information and what they own and what their performance has been and move between quite easily. Um, reports I've heard that PSG has bought them, but I don't expect the service to change. They really do offer a great service if you're interested in unit trusts. The big pros for unit trust, uh, the biggest is probably selection. And I'm going to throw that on the other side too. But for now, there are over a thousand unit trusts. And that's got pros and cons. The big pro to that is niche, that you can go and find a unit trust with a, a fairly niche uh, a space. In other words, you could probably find a IT unit trust or a commodity or a gold mining unit trust. So you really can delve down. You don't have to go and buy a general equity unit trust. And certainly if you want to 
go and invest in a particular sector of the market, be that locally or globally, the unit trust is invariably the space. It's easy, and I say maybe, uh, the, the caveat to that, and what I'm trying to say here is that, yeah, I mean, you sign up with the unit trust, you do your debit order or your lump sum, um, the maybe part is that there are a thousand to choose from, in fact, over a thousand. There are only 400 shares on the market. There are a thousand unit trusts. There are about 30 exchange traded funds and exchange traded notes. So that, 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 that selection is, is perhaps a little daunting in places. Um, you're going to go through an advisor, and that's a pro and a con. A con is the fee side. Certainly on the pro side, an advisor who can perhaps help you as to which of the thousand ones you want to look at. Um, important, obviously, how good is your advisor. And you can do monthly debits, and typically from about 300 grand. So you can start small. And that's, that's certainly a very big pro in that space. Cons, that selection. I threw it on the other side as well, simply because there's so many that you can select from. And, and that can be a little bit brain numbing, I suspect. Uh, costs, they can be expensive. Check the costs. Costs are critically important, particularly if you've got an advisor, they might be taking some as well. So that can really cost you a lot. And then performance. The truth of the matter is that unit trusts don't always do so great. In essence, half of them can beat the market, which has got to be your benchmark, and half are going to not beat the market. How do you choose that right half? And then what about costs? Research done by Mike Brown at ETFSA suggests that of the general equity unit trusts, only 15% actually beat the market. That's one in six. That's not a great performance. And then advisor fees. How much is that advisor going to cost you, and are they value for money? If they value for money, absolutely not a problem. But how much? So these are your pros and cons. I, I I don't know about unit trusts. I certainly don't have any. I've moved away from them. I prefer the ETS space. Um, but certainly they are available. They're out there. Um, and they're part of the collective investment schemes. Exchange Traded Funds, ETS, also part of collective investment schemes. We did a video on them, a webinar on understanding ETS. There's a short URL you can type in there to find it, or you could just search on, on just one lap.com. Um, the options to buy them is direct. You can buy them through your stockbroker as well, or you can go to etfsa.coza, which is like Equinox. They're like a pick and pay for uh, exchange traded funds where you can buy and swap and etc. There is a cost involved in that. It does add about maybe as much as a 0.8 or a whole percentage point, but uh, it's convenience, and then you pay for that convenience in a sense, I suspect. So your pros to ETFs, they're simple. An ETF of the top 40 is going to track the top 40 index. They're very simple to understand. They've very often got very simple underlying assets. There's some niche to them. They, they, six months ago, they weren't terribly niche, but we're certainly getting. We had Standard Bank launch an Africa ETN rather than ETF uh, last week, Monday. So we can now invest into Africa. Data Bank's got the international one. So we, we're getting some niche in that space. But typically, they're relatively broad. They're also offering you access to commodities and the like. So they're getting a, a little more specialized in that space. And, and that's going to only but grow over time. Um, certainly costs is a big pro in that they are cheap. They're very cheap. And, and that's important. A small fee uh, up front and annual of the, of the rest of your investing horizon can make significant impact into your ultimate investment at the end. They're designed to track the market. Um, so that's a pro. It's also a con in that you're going to get market return and less effort. Uh, you don't select. You just go and buy the top 40 index, the Satrix 40 and you've got exposure to the biggest 40 stocks in the market, and you're going to get that market return. Of course, sometimes that return is good. Sometimes that return is bad because the market is collapsing. Cons is that small selection. It's growing. There are about 30 at the moment uh, compared to 1,000 uh, plus unit trusts compared to 400 stocks. But certainly it is growing. I don't think it's ever going to be as big as the unit trust industry, but it's certainly going to get bigger year on and year out as we go forward at the moment. And then another con, perhaps, is market return. The, the, the Satrix 40 is going to give you top 40 performance. You're not going to beat the market. Again, that is changing in that you're starting to get some Raffi products, which give you a little bit of art performance. Absa have launched some Maps products, which will be coming out, I think, late May or early June. So you, you're getting a little bit of possibility for market art perform, but predominantly they're going to track their underlying index, and they're going to do it with a very small tracking error. 
I think anyone who's heard me speak before, who's, who's heard me ask me about exchange traded funds, I think they're the best things in sliced bread. I think they should be in all portfolios, even in mine. I've got my equities that I own. I've got my derivatives that I trade. But I also, at the same time, I have a lot of my investment. Around maybe 35 or 40% of my investment is directly into ETFs. And when folks say to me, what should I buy? My answer is usually, go buy an ETF. Nice, easy, can't go wrong. I think they're great products. You can do them via a stockbroker. They will trade in the market. You can go direct to Satrix, Absa, RMV, and the like. Or you can go to the pick and pay of ETS, which is ETFSA, uh, run by Mike Brown, who started Satrix uh, about 10 years ago. Moving on to the uh, stockbroker, and here I'm talking a traditional full service stockbroker. And what I mean by full service is that they're going to give you advice. They're going to, you can phone them up and say, what do you think of MTN? Or, you know, should I sell my bulletins and that sort of thing? Um, so that they help you in that process. And in essence, they're doing the research for you. So it, 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 it's almost, I don't want to say a lazy person, but in the sense it is a bit of a lazy person, perhaps a little less lazy than exchange traded funds. And hey, don't get me wrong, I've got nothing, nothing against being lazy. Um, certainly stockbrokers in the full service sense are on their way out, but there are still a lot out there. They are still available. They are still in business. On the con side is that they can charge you, they usually charge a fair bit more. In their defense, they need to. You, know, you make a phone call, you chat to them a couple of minutes on the line, that's the time when they're not able to speak to somebody else. So they've got to charge a little bit more because it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Uh, relationships are important in this space as well. Um, their performance, in other words, how good is their advice? Get a back record, check how they're doing, maybe speak to some clients, ask them for some of their research they've done over the last year, see how they've actually done, see how good they are. Otherwise, what you're paying for, you're paying for that research, you're paying for that performance. If they can't do it, then maybe you're not so sure about it. It's almost, when you select a full service broker, it's almost an interview process, and it's very much you interviewing them. And often they're going to want a large portfolio. The, the 10,000 rand is not going to impress them. They're going to want 100 or 500,000, maybe even a million rand, simply because they need the economics of scale. You know, it takes them the same amount of time to do an order for a client, whether they're doing a 1,000 transaction or a 1 million rand transaction. So in many cases, they really do want you to be a, a larger investor. Um, I haven't used a full service broker in ugh, over a decade. I, I'm very much the, the DIY, which in these days is your online environment. As I said, all the major banks have got them. There's also Sunlam, there's PSG. There's a, a, a large selection out there. There's, there's certainly over a dozen to choose from in this day and age for the South African market alone. The big pro is costs. You can do transactions from half a percent plus tax, a minimum of 50 rand. Um, the expensive guys are probably charging you 0 0.8, whereas full service brokers are probably charging you north of 1% and maybe even north of 1.5% of your transaction value. So they're nice and cheap. That means you can start smaller. So you can start with a smaller amount of money. You don't need the hundreds of thousands. You don't even need the tens of thousands. You can start with a much smaller process. It's very much rewarding, and that's obviously a flip. And I'll come to that in the con side. But it's rewarding to do your own work, to do your own research, to have a portfolio, to in essence be your own asset manager. Now, I counter that rewarding by, as I said, I also have a lot of exchange traded funds. So that if I completely lose my mind and lose money, I've got the exchange traded funds, which will kind of keep me keep me safe in a sense. A lot of tools there online, the internet in this day and age, a lot of uh, products and tools and the like that we can engage with. Um, you know, they'll offer you obviously the full JSC listing. They'll offer you derivative products. Often they'll have online charts. And in these days and ages, they've got research. They've got really all the bells and whistles. It's, it's, it's internet banking on steroids in many cases. So it really has moved forward. The cons, you need to build a knowledge base. You need to start learning about the market. Some of them will offer education, sometimes online, sometimes face-to-face. -face, but you need to build that knowledge, and that's going to take time. Depending on, on how much effort you put in and the like, it could take months, it could take years. Now, I like the knowledge. I think it's useful. It's knowledge we can impart to our family, our friends, our children, our grandparents, um, and it's what we're doing here at just one lap. But, uh, maybe you're saying, you know what, you're not interested or you haven't got the time or something like that, then perhaps the DIY is less for you. 
you've got to do your own research. Not as hard as one thinks it is. There are a lot of tools out there. There are a lot of places you can get research. Um, and, and it's not the rocket science I think many think it is. It can be intimidating, but certainly you need to do your own research. And then, of course, there's nobody to blame. Now that's the flip side to the rewarding. And, and that's, as I said, why I have the exchange traded funds. I, I'm a huge fan of the DIY online environment, but I'm a stress. When folks say to me, what should I do? I typically say, go the ETF route buy Satrix 40, whether you do a lump sum, whether you do a small monthly investment, because with, with the ETS you can do 300 rand a month, you can do a thousand rand lump sum, so nice and small, easy to get into, very low cost structure, and you're going to get market performance. And that market is typically over the longer term the best performing asset class. So I say to folks, go the ETF route, and then maybe if you want to get involved in the market while you're doing the ETS, while you're learning, do the ETS, gain that knowledge before you jump in with both feet. Asset managers, these are asset managers, hedge funds, folks, you'll just pretty much you give them the money and they will run with it. You need to make sure you've got a mandate. In other words, what are they trying to achieve? What are the benchmarks? Very important you understand the costs because they can be expensive. Often a lot of them will charge two or three percent upfront fee and then a performance fee. You don't mind paying the performance fee if they're beating the benchmark mandate, but what is the benchmark? You know, if it's just inflation, well, heck, that's easy to beat. And really, we need to grow our money faster than inflation. And again, it's about performance. And again, they often want a large portfolio. In some cases, hundreds of thousands, if not millions or more. Asset managers would also, I mean, collective investment schemes, unit trusts and ETFs are in a sense asset managers. Not really, really, but they're kind of really fitting into that space in this day and age where they're asset managers as much as anything else. And then my favorite two products, AutoShare Invest is from Standard Bank, and we've got Shareholder from F&B in my next slide. AutoShare Invest, what they're saying here, it's a Standard Bank product. It operates within internet banking, so you need to have a Standard Bank internet banking account, and then you need a current account, and you activate the account from within there. It's very low cost, it's 1% plus 20 Rand to buy, it's 0 0.75 plus 20 Rand to sell. They do purchases once a month and they do sales once a week. Minimum 500 Rand per purchase and they've got almost 100 shares to choose from. So what they've got is a list of 100 shares, almost 100 shares and you say this month please buy me 500 Rand MTN and 700 Rand of famous brands as examples. And the next month you continue with the MTN but you drop famous brands and you decide to buy some spas. And slowly you can build a portfolio. What's nice about it, exchange traded fund or even a unit trust, you get exposure to a basket. Here you can buy individual shares and you can do it cheaply. In an online environment, 500 rands worth of shares is going to cost you uh, easily, it's going to cost you 50 or 60 rand. Here it's going to cost you 25 rand. So significantly cheaper. Uh, the con, perhaps, you can only do purchases once a month, they do it on the 25th, and they only do sales on a weekly basis. So this is certainly for the longer term investing, but it's a nice way to start building a portfolio of individual stocks rather than a basket. The share builder, which is an FNB product, the newer of the two, you need to have an FNB or a discovery account, in fact I think a West Bank account will also work in that process. Uh, again, low cost. Their fee is 2% with a minimum of 50 Rand plus VAT. So it's actually a little bit more than the standard bank depending where you're buying at what price points you are buying. No minimum investment, which standard bank says you've got to do it in tranches of 500. They do buys and sells on a daily basis. They've got a much smaller selection of shares, 21 shares, um, and you can buy Kruger Rand. So again, a really nice product if you want to start building up a portfolio of individual stocks rather than a collection of basket of shares much as your ETS and unit trusts offer you. Quick com comparison between the FNB and the Standard Bank. The FNB is a little more expensive. It does have a smaller selection. Standard Bank has a much larger selection. FNB offers you Krugerrands, which is physical gold, whereas Standard Bank offers you new gold, which is an ETF, so it's paper gold in a sense. FNB does daily transactions. They get the order before 9 o'clock. They were activated at 3 o'clock that afternoon, whereas Standard Bank does purchases monthly and sales weekly. 
Uh, FNB has a 17 rand per month fee, administration fee. Standard Bank charges you 25 rand every second month if you haven't done any transactions. If you're transacting, you don't pay Standard Bank. If you don't transact for two months, they charge you 25 rand per two months. Uh, it's a close call. I think that Standard Bank edges out um, on one issue FNB win, and that's the fact that they do daily transactions, and that might be a little more important to you. Um, and of course, maybe you bank with FNB, in which case I think then, well, it's easier, so perhaps go the FNB route. Yeah, otherwise, you've got to open a standard bank account. That's going to attract fees uh, and FICA documentation and the like. So if you bank with FNB, no brainer, go that way. Uh, if you bank with standard bank, no brainer, go that way. If you bank somewhere else, it's tough. As I said, the FNB's really got the daily in its feet in its favour. Otherwise, I think the, F, the Standard Bank uh, just sort of noses ahead. Great product. Great way to start a investment portfolio and start building one up. My recommendation, as I said, top of the list, exchange traded funds. My two preferred is Satrix 40 or Satrix Rafi. The RAFI is a slight fundamental index, it stands for Research Affiliate Fundamental Indexation, which gives you a little more performance from the Satrix 40, so certainly a little bit better there. You can buy them direct from satrix.coza or etfsa.coza, 300 rand a month uh, debits or a thousand lump sum, certainly great products. You can also get them from your stockbroker, of course. The DIY route. I'm a fan of the DIY, the online route. Um, I, I, I think it, it's, I, I like being in control. As I said, I do that in conjunction with ETFs. I like the cost structure, the access to information. It's really there. It makes me an asset manager. In my case, it's for me, it's for my family, um, my wife, my sister, my nephew, my niece. It makes me my own little fund manager, but I still have, as I said, 35 or 40% in exchange traded funds. And then the FNB share builder or the Standard Bank Auto Share Invest. Both great products. I use Auto Share Invest. I buy Sassel and uh, Satrix 40 and British American Tobacco pretty much every month. Those are just stocks that I want. So I do monthly purchases of those. And I do them relatively smaller, small amounts. It wouldn't be viable to do them within my DIY broker. So I do them directly through Auto Share Invest. And that's because I was banking and in fact was working at Standard Bank. So I went the ASI route to auto share invest. Quick recap. Need to decide on a strategy. What are you trying to, you know, I suppose first question is how much money? Have you got lump sums? Have you got monthly amounts? How much is your lump sum? How much is your monthly amount? Um, you know, what sort of time horizons are you looking at? How much effort are you prepared to, 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 to invest? I mean, do you want to do that research or are you, would you rather say, let me buy an ETF for? Let me give it to an asset manager. Let them do the work. I just want to sit back and watch my profits grow. And then you can go multiple routes. As I said, I have a DIY, I have an ETF, and I have an ASI. So I've gone multiple routes. It's not a case of either or you have to do one route or you have to do another route. Uh, nice and short. As I said, fairly simple, not a complicated process at all. Um, this is how to buy the shares. From here, of course, you, there's a webinar on how to select stockbrokers. We've got webinars on exchange-traded funds, the different assets within there. Admin fees are, are certainly part of the process. I mean, you take a DIY process, so you, you're going to have an admin fee. They're going to charge you somewhere between some charge 50 rand a month, some charge 400 rand a year. Most of them will say that if you do a certain number of transactions, they will waiver that fee. That needs to be taken into account, of course. Um, the larger asset managers and the like would, and, and unit trusts will typically charge an annual fee or an introduction fee. In other words, you deposit a certain amount of money with them and they will deduct an immediate fee from it. Um, and then your exchange traded funds have a fee, uh, typically running at about 0.8% or less. And if you go via ETFSA, there will be a fee attached with that as well. 